Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me for your QuickBooks Time Demo. My name is Sharissa, and I'll be your tour guide as we walk through the basics of your QuickBooks Time account. We'll go over what it looks like to schedule, track, manage, and report on time. I'm so glad you're able to join me today, and I can't wait to show you all the fun things you and your employees can do with QuickBooks Time to make you and your company successful at tracking time. Let's get started. First, I want to go over what we're currently looking at on our shared screen. I'm on our main website, as you can see, and QuickBooks Time is a time tracking system. We also do scheduling, and it is all cloud-based. So when you have time, take a look around our site to learn more about what we can do for you to make time tracking the easiest part of running your business. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my QuickBooks Time Test account. I'm logged in as the main admin in the account, and that just means I have the highest level of permissions. Other users in the account can have a wide range of permissions that you, as the admin, can set up. They can be workers, managers, admins, or anything in between. You can set them up with custom permissions to fit the role that they have in your company. So just keep in mind, not everyone needs to see the same exact view you and I see on my shared screen here today. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to our schedule that you'll find on your left side navigation. And here you're going to see that my week is already set up for this week. So we're going to go ahead and jump on over to our next week and set that one up. You can go in the top left hand corner and go to actions to add a shift. Title is optional as well as the color. Let's go ahead and choose a color. You can also make it an all day event or repeating event. Let's go ahead and do that. I can make my repeating event go weekly. I can also skip weeks if I need to. I'm just going to go ahead and do it for this week. And then I can adjust the start date as well. And then I can update the start and end times and select the team member that this is for, and then select the job that they'll be working on. Location is optional, but is powered by Google. So you can go ahead and start typing in what you're looking for and then select the location. Notes are also optional. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a draft so you can see what that looks like. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple more people, do the same process, making it a repeating event. And you'll notice that I just clicked on the box rather than going up to actions. So you do have two ways of adding in a shift for a user. I'm going to save it as a draft. You can add as many shifts as you need to for a user. So here I'm going to go ahead and add a secondary shift for Barbara. And I'm going to make it a different color just so that you can see that there are multiple shifts for this user. And save it as a draft. Then I'm going to go ahead and add one for myself as well. So you can see that anyone can use the schedule. And you can use the drop down for the start and end times, or you can manually type in the hours that you need. You'll notice that my administration job had a location attached to it within my jobs. So it actually populated that for me in the top right hand corner. After you save everything as a draft, you can publish the full week and send out a notification to those users. You can also load week templates or save the week as a template or also copy the previous week. We also have an option to subscribe your QuickBooks time schedule to outsource calendar, such as Google calendar, Apple iOS calendar, or Outlook. So if you click learn more, it'll actually give you that step-by-step -step guide on how to get that done. Next, we're going to go over how to start tracking your time. And we're going to start with our time clock. So this is a clock in and clock out option. You'll actually notice that I clocked in at 8 a.m. And my current total is going to be on the far left hand side. And my day total will be right there in the middle. And it'll also show me my week total to the far right. I can seamlessly switch between different jobs throughout my day by clicking on switch. And now my current total will start tracking time for the current task I am working on. I can also take notes and take breaks. 
And then at the very end of my day, I can just clock out. Another way to track time is through our time entries and going to the second tab at the top called manual time card, where you can go ahead and put bulk sets of hours. So you just go ahead and select a job and then put in bulk hours for the day and then press save in the bottom right hand corner. And because I am an admin, I can switch between different users in the top right hand corner of the manual time card to add in bulk hours for any other user. Another way to track time is through our mobile app that you can download for free on any Android or Apple smartphone. And mobile time tracking can help your team stay on track. Obviously, mobile timesheets, being able to track that time on the go. You also have a crew function for any managers to go ahead and track time for users. Users are able to view their schedule on the mobile app as well, and you as the admin or any managers can actually update the schedule on the mobile app as well. Another way to track time is through our time clock kiosk, which can be downloaded for free as well on any Android or Apple tablet, or even set up on any computer or laptop. I love this kiosk feature, being able to track time very quickly, if you have a lot of users that need to clock in very quickly, this is a great option. They just log in with a four digit pin code and then they clock into the job that they need to be working on. Another great reason to use a time clock kiosk is that we have photo capture with facial recognition. So anytime a user clocks in or clocks out, it will actually snap a picture of the user who's clocking in. This helps prevent against buddy punching. And if it's not the correct user, that facial recognition will alert the admin and let them know, hey, this doesn't look like the correct user. And that way you can have a conversation with the two users who were buddy punching. And since QuickBooks time is cloud-based, you can mix and match your time tracking options. Users can clock in on the computer, track time throughout the day on their mobile application, and then clock out on a kiosk. So what happens after we schedule and track time? You as the admin are able to view and manage the timesheets that your workers track. Also note, depending on the permissions you've given your workers, they may also have the option to manage their own timesheets. If not, it'll be up to you as the admin or any managers to go in and update those timesheets. I'm going to give you a few ways of how you can do that. First is going to be our who's working window, and you'll find that on the far right hand side of your QuickBooks time desktop screen where you can go in and select a user, and click on the paper and pencil icon to edit their timesheets. You can even update the day that it's supposed to be for. So this is just a quick and simple way to go ahead and update that. You can make them currently working, or if, they're, if they forgot to clock out, you can go ahead and update that and press save. And you'll see that Alex is still on the clock and I can go ahead and update that time for him. He was supposed to clock in at eight o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and press save and that'll update his timesheet for today. Another way to manage those timesheets is through time entries. Once more, you can go through manual time card, but I'm going to show you how you can do it through the timesheets editor. So you can go ahead and press add timesheet and you can add as many timesheets as you need to for any user. You can jump back as far as you need to. You can also view by day, week, month, year, or pay period or even show past days with no time on them. You can view manager edits. I love that little hidden gem right there in actions. And then any timesheets that you see on list, you can go ahead and press the edit pencil icon to update those. You also have a view log option and a trash can icon to delete any timesheets that you may need to. This gear icon that you see in the top right hand corner will actually allow you to pick and choose which columns you see across the top. And then if you need to, you can filter by team member or just view your specific timesheets as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and talk about reports and reports is where we're going to take all the data that's been entered and tracked into your QuickBooks time account and let you filter as needed to produce some really helpful reports to view against what has been tracked. And we have a ton of reporting options, but I'm just going to introduce you to the top three most used reports that we have. And if these three aren't to your liking, always feel free to reach out to us. Let us know what you're looking for, and we can help find the report that best fits your specific needs. 
We always want to make sure that you are taken care of when it comes to making sure that the time that is tracked in your account is ready for whatever you need to use it for, whether it's invoicing, payroll, job costing, or anything else. The first report I'm going to touch on is our payroll report, probably the most used report. And you'll find that under reports. And it's going to be that first one in that secondary menu. You can filter the report by week, month, pay period, or even a custom date range. I'm just going to go ahead and select this week so you can see what we've already tracked. You can select a single team member or view the group and team members, show the hour totals in decimals or hours, minutes, and seconds. Sort them by first or last name, or even hide the team members with zero hours. Once here, you'll be able to see in the top left-hand corner that we have a bunch of hours that have been tracked. And this is going to show you the total number for all the users that track time. You can see it broken down in color coordination, which will also match what you see on the far right-hand side of each row for each user. So regular will be in green. Red is going to be overtime. Orange, whether it's outlined or filled in, will represent any breaks taken. And I can expand all so I can see all the timesheets or just click the plus sign next to a user I want to expand upon the details. I can see all their timesheets for the week. I can also download them to the far right hand side. A daily breakdown, job breakout, overtime details, and I can even add more timesheets from here as well. So if maybe they forgot, you can add some more timesheets. You can also edit and delete from here. So if I needed to edit a timesheet, I could, or if a timesheet was made in error, you can go ahead and delete it by clicking that little red circle. I can also print, download them, or even open up as a PDF. This is my favorite way to view this report. It actually gives you page breaks between each user. That way there's no overlap. I love this, especially if you have to print any timesheets out. You can print them out to have a hard copy and put them in personal files, and that way there's no overlap. You can also adjust report filters if you need to by going to the top right hand corner and do some more report exports as well. The next report we're going to go over is our project report. This one's super fun to play around with. You'll go to reports on the far left hand side. And on the secondary menu, you're going to go ahead and select project report. Here I can do my report dates by week, pay period, or custom date range. I'm just going to do it by pay period. You can do it by hours, minutes, and seconds. You can filter as you need to. And then you'll see all these pie charts. And this gives you a really nice breakdown and visual of what has been tracked during the date range you've chosen. I can see the percentages of time worked for each job, as well as each group and each team member. And I love that I can go ahead and move my mouse over it and it will highlight what it is referring to. Then at the very top, you can go ahead and view your timesheets and you can also edit and delete from here as well. So you do have all these managing options within each report as well. I can download the timesheet. I can print the report as I see it, which will show me all these pie charts. I can also do job costing from here as well. It will pull up the same exact date range that you've already pulled for the project report. And here you can update any hourly rates that need updating and then save and continue. And it's going to go ahead and give you a breakdown of job codes, employees. It's going to show you their regular rate, the hours that they worked, and then the estimated cost. It also does that for overtime and double time. And then to the farthest right hand side, it's going to give you the total estimated cost. So this is just a gross cost report that you can go ahead and use whenever you need to. And then you'll see at the very bottom that the totals are going to be right here. And then the total estimated cost for all users in the very bottom right hand corner. And then back to the project report, if you do need to update any report filters, just go to the top right hand corner to update them and then rerun the report. The last report I'm going to touch on today is our approvals report. You can go by week, pay period, or a custom date range, as well as select individual team members or 
view it in decimals or hours and minutes. And at the very top, you'll see three tabs. We have our all, the approved, and the unapproved, so you can see which ones still need to be approved. Before you approve a timesheet, you can go ahead and view them just underneath the total number of hours that have been tracked on the far right hand side. And you'll see that you can see the job breakdown, overtime details. You can also add timesheets or edit and delete from here as well. But if all of this looks good and you're ready to go, you can go ahead and exit out of there and then click the blue approve button. Once you do that, it's going to highlight green indicating that it has been approved. And now when you go and view those report details, you'll actually see a little lock icon to the far left hand side, indicating that this time has been locked and cannot be edited or changed unless it is unapproved. So I could go ahead and unapprove it if I needed to, to make any edits or changes. And if you need to update the report filters, again, in the top right hand corner, you have those options to rerun the report. Lastly, I want to go ahead and tell you how QuickBooks time can also help you save more time with our integration options. Here we have our app marketplace, which is a list of all the third party systems we can integrate with. QuickBooks time can be used by itself or in conjunction with any of these other systems. This can save you a ton more time with being able to export hours and import data. So that's our intro into QuickBooks time, a little bit of scheduling, tracking, managing, and reporting on time. And this is just the first step into the world of QuickBooks Time, learning about who we are and what we can help your company with. But there is so much more. We are always happy to help you get you up and running. Feel free to reach out to us whenever you need us. We are here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can give us a call or chat with us. You can also go to our Help Center and find step-by-step -step guides and videos. Again, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today learning about QuickBooks time, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.